An Iowa mother has been accused by the state of using cocaine while she was pregnant with her son and since then has been embroiled in a conflict with DHS over custody of her two boys. She claims she has never done drugs in her life. She doesn't even take pain reliever. So today she's here to tell us her story, what has really gone on, the nightmare of the past few months of trying to protect her family and to protect her sons from the predation of the government. You will be absolutely blown away by this story and there's a lot to learn, I think, from her testimony. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Good Ranchers. Go to GoodRanchers.com, use code Allie at checkout. That's GoodRanchers.com, code Allie. Emily, thanks so much for taking the time to join us. I really appreciate it. Hi, Allie. Thanks. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. So I'm bringing you on to talk about your story, which I mm-hmm. originally, I think I saw it on Instagram. You posted a video that just, it, it broke my heart because you were talking about what happened with your son who is now eight, eight months eight old. Months, yeah. Um. So I'll just kind of give you the floor. Tell us what happened. Yeah. Um. So I've never, uh, I guess, had so many people listening to me. And so if I, bear with me if I have um, uh, trouble. <laughs> um, so my my son uh, is eight months old, my son Paul. Um, he was born at the end of March. And um, he was actually born in an unplanned home birth. And uh, we... Uh, he was born healthy and it was actually a really maybe at some point I'll tell that story too it's really amazing but um, he was born and we went into the hospital afterwards to just you know make sure everyone is fine and that so you didn't plan this this was just a very precipitous birth it just happened really fast and you're like "Uh uh-oh and (laughs) so he was born at home that wasn't the intention yes no that was not the intention Um, I actually love home birth but we uh had some financial struggles and so we uh, decided to go through insurance and that's why we went through the hospital Um, but his birth no it was not planned uh, to be at home Um, it actually wasn't uh, precipitous necessarily Mm. Uh, it it lasted about 10 hours Mm. and my first labor was I think 28 hours and so we really thought we had at least five more hours or something. So, okay. uh, we, so you have you have an older son, and how old is he? Yes, he's two and a half. He's two and a half. Mm-hmm. So this was your second birth. So, as you said, it wasn't like it was super fast. You just thought you had more time. Yeah, than you exactly. Had. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we went into the hospital afterwards, and everything checked out okay. Um, he was perfectly healthy, no concerns or anything. Um, I had some complications in the hospital, but we were able to resolve them. Um, and uh, then we went home and settled in. And um, two weeks later, uh, we got a knock on our door unannounced, and it was DHS with a sheriff. And they told us that our son tested positive for cocaine. And DHS stands for um, Department of Health and Human Services. DHHS. Yeah. Um, so in other, like some places, Child Protective Services, CPS, same kind of thing. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, and so when they knocked on our door, we were completely shocked and blindsided and extremely fearful uh, because when when you get a knock on your door from DHS, you just kind of jump to the the possibility um, of them coming to remove your, your children. Child. So tell us about that moment. You open the door and you see two people or however many, how, however many two. people it was, two people that you didn't know I'm guessing and they're you know I don't know what kind of like official guard they had on probably very serious Mm -hmm. were you just completely confused at first were you like this is this has got to be a mistake you've got the wrong person yeah a lot of confusion um I actually was recovering I hemorrhaged in the hospital after the birth Mm -hmm. um and so I became anemic and I was um you know obviously had a a really large like harder recovery from like my past birth. Um, And so I 
I was also like very weak and um, I had, I was nursing my son. And, and so you can kind of imagine like the hormones and the emotions that are going on yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, yeah, all of that was going on. And so when we uh, answered the door, uh, we were very shocked. We were extremely upset. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we kind of just didn't know what to say. And, you know, you say all these things like, well, if that's impossible. I've never done cocaine. Um, I've never done cocaine in my life, actually. Um, yeah. And so, so they, when they, when you open the door, it did, were there, were there any pleasantries? Like, how did they say, this is why we're here? Um, all I can remember really is that she said, hi, my name is, you know, her name um, with DHS. Um, and, you know, she asked me, are you Emily Donlin? She said, are, are you the mother of Paul Donlin? And um, then uh, I answered yes and yes. And then she said, uh, well, Paul uh, tested positive for cocaine. And then... Uh, wow. Yeah, at that point, we just kind of said, um, you know, everything we could think of. Um, she, we'll get into more of this, I guess, in a little bit, but uh, she didn't really like lead us through the the situation. Um, and so we were kind of like confused, like, what are we supposed to do? You know, most people, they don't have, they don't know anything about DHS until they knock on their door. Right. They don't know how they're supposed to react. So right. now looking back, I would have said, you can wait outside. I'm going to call our lawyer or yeah. I'm going to call a lawyer yeah. um, before I let them in. But, um, you know, <laughs> we, we didn't know that at that point. So, so they came into your house. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you were just desperate to prove that this was a mistake. Yeah. Because you said that you've never done cocaine in your life, right? Never. Okay. And I mean... So how did, how did they, and maybe this is what you're about to say, but they said he tested positive for cocaine. How, what did they test? Um, yes. So they, they took an eight to 10 inch sample from um, my, his umbilical cord. Right. And they, they tested it. Um, they send it to, I don't believe they do the testing at the hospital. They actually send it to a lab. And so then they test it at the lab and receive the results. Uh, they they say this is for continuation of care. So they say, if if a baby is exposed to cocaine, we, we need to know, or not just cocaine, but drugs in, in utero, we need to know uh, what that is so that we can um, continue to care for the child uh, through their withdrawal if they're having it. Um, they, they say that this is the, the purpose of this drug test. Um, however, we did not ever receive any continuation of care for our child so there was no call from the hospital following up they didn't even they don't even receive and in, in our case they didn't receive the test um until seven days after the birth anyway and yeah. so and the hospital you didn't get a call from the hospital saying you got this positive test and no. we need to make sure that your child is okay you just got the knock on the door from dhs and that's all they said they said tested positive for cocaine. We mm -hmm. found it in the umbilical cord. And you, I'm sure, as I said, desperate to prove your innocence, you just invited them in, right? Yes. And so tell us what happened from there. Yeah. So we had faith that they were going to, uh, obviously, you know, we have nothing to hide. So we're going to let them in. We're going to tell them the story. And, and obviously, they're going to see that I didn't do cocaine, that I that this isn't what happened, you know? And so we, we trusted that, that, that they were going to see that. Um, they came in, we, we sat down at our table, our dining table. Um, we told her the whole story of the birth and all that. And, you know, well, could there be a false positive? You know, could there be a mislabel? Could there be all of these things? Um, and, uh, you know, we're a very holistic family. So we, you know, there are several things that we are concerned about, ingredients in our food, things that you know, medications we're taking. I don't even take ibuprofen if I have a headache. Um, I don't give our sons uh, Tylenol, things like that. So we, we explained all of this to her to try to just let her know who we are and how upsetting this is. And we were also very concerned about the potential baby that was exposed cocaine. If it wasn't right. my son and it was a mix-up, 
you know, what happened with that baby. Right. Um, and if it if it is my son, if my son was exposed to cocaine, you know, uh, that's a, a huge problem that's for a, us. Right. And there is no possibility that there was any cocaine in your home. No. None. And so as you were telling them all of this, what was their reaction? Did it seem like they were like, oh, yeah, okay. I, did it seem like they were kind of responsive to what you were saying or... Um, yeah, she seemed pretty responsive. Um, you could tell, you know, uh, she didn't really know what to think. Um, I've, you know, later on I heard that, like, they get this all the time, obviously. If somebody tests positive, they say, well, I, I didn't do it, you know, or it's it's a false positive. So we had that playing mm. against us, right, because many most people in this situation, if, if they were actually caught doing drugs, they're not going to say, well, this is, yeah, this is true, probably the first time. So I think she was kind of confused. Um, but, you know, she looked at our home, she asked to see the kids. Um, and, you know, obviously, there were no safe safety concerns. And um, typically, they would create a safety plan um, after that, from to my knowledge, but she never created a safety plan. She told us, you know, we don't have any behavioral indicators. So she wasn't concerned about, you know, the situation. Uh, she didn't see any signs of drug use, obviously, in our home or anything. So, um, so yeah, uh, uh, I think she was confused by the situation. Yeah. All right, quick pause to tell you about our first sponsor for the day, and that is Adele Natural Cosmetics. I love this company because I love their products so much. All holistic, all of the ingredients in their products are ingredients that you can pronounce. They're from God's medicine cabinet. They really care about everything that goes into both their makeup and their skincare. I use their skincare every day. I love their essential cleanser. I love their serums, their moisturizers, all of their um, all of their body oils and body lotions. I just love knowing that it is all completely natural and it smells good. It makes my skin look great. I love what it's done to the texture of my skin. This is a Christian company. They're outspoken about their pro-life value. So they're just a great company to support and to get your products from. Go to adelnaturalcosmetics.com. Use code Allie for 30% off first-time purchases in the month of December. That is uh, adelnaturalcosmetics.com, code Allie for 30% off. adelnaturalcosmetics.com, code Allie. So you had denied... Um, newborn vaccines which lots of parents do mm -hmm. um vitamin k hep b the eye ointment um mm -hmm. i think i read something about dtap too but they don't give that right at birth i don't think so no i yeah. think it's the hep b is what they do yeah um so did they did the hospital push back on that like did you feel like they were kind of questioning your abilities as a mother because of your holistic approach like was that playing through your mind when all of this was happening? You know, it's really interesting because I thought that's how it would be um, because of, you know, the things you hear, like when you are wanting to do alternative choices like that for your children. Um, but I actually felt I did feel like they were respectful of all of our choices. Um, we did our, our prenatal care with they have a, a really great midwife department at this hospital, which mm. is why we chose this hospital. And um, um, they are you know, a lot of them come from the home birth space, like a more holistic approach. Um, and even the nurses that that weren't um, ones that I had interacted with before, I, I really did feel like I, res I was respected um, of my choices. Um, I don't know if that's actually true. I mean, it, it sounds like they, they saw a reason to do a drug test on my cord. So maybe it was just a forward facing like make me feel good make you feel like you're respected but but really we're going to check a box that you you are um you know somebody we need to test yeah so let's talk about that for a second because you kind of were told i i, I remember in your story you kind of were told conflicting things that oh we test everyone to see mm -hmm. if their babies have been exposed to drugs for the continuity of care purpose, as you said. Um, but then you also heard, well, no, we only check we only check babies if we feel like there is cause, if we have reason to believe that their parents might be on drugs. Mm -hmm. So did you find out the truth about that, which one it was, and do you know why they decided to test you? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't I don't think I really know yet um, exactly what happened or what they typically do. I have heard that, yes, they test everybody. This is a county hospital also, um, so keep that in mind. It's government funded. It's also in a very, um, you know, uh, lower income neighborhood. Um, so uh, yes, I've heard that they test everyone, but then I have also spoken with my midwife and she said that uh, they have indicators, which if you have indicators, you're not testing everyone because why would you have indicators? Yeah. I don't know. That's just a question that I had. Um, the indicators are, there's, I believe there's five indicators. Um, I don't know all of them, but I know that in my case, so um, I was told by the nurse that anybody that uh, has a baby outside of the hospital, they check it as precipitous labor. So precipitous labor is defined as one to two hours, right? It's a very quick labor. So I was told this by my nurse that, um, you know, that's what they're labeling my birth as, is precipitous. And I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, um, it wasn't precipitous. Yeah. I labored at 6 p.m. to from 6 p.m. the evening before to 6 a.m. about, and my son was born around like 6, 6.30, 6.40, around yeah. there. So I, I told her this, and then she said, well, we, we don't have any other way to label it. So, so then I was label, labeled as uh, precipitous, and mm. precipitous labor is an indicator that you should test mm. um, uh, an umbilical cord that. or a baby. I didn't know that. I feel like I know a lot of women <laughs> who have had precipitous labors, and I didn't yeah. know that that could be an indication of I drug don't, use. I don't know if it's every hospital's policy. I'm not sure. Right. Um, but that's from my experience with this, at least, and what I've been told. So precipitous labor is one, and then um, none or no no prenatal or late prenatal care um, is also an indicator. Um, and so uh, I know for sure the precipitous labor one was something that they uh, had marked me as. Okay, so that's possibly mm -hmm. why they tested. Um, and so what happened after the DHS... Um, personnel talked to you how, how did that conversation end and then what happened after that um, so this whole conversation was so confusing because we kept asking like what the next steps are and like how, how, how many times are you gonna come here are we gonna be super like she she told us we will go through um, we will undergo a 20-day investigation um, and during which she would then you know whatever they always say she said so many times we're gonna create a plan and we kept asking, what is that plan? Yeah. And why do we need, why do we need it? Yeah. And then she would kind of say, well, it could be this or it could be this. She would give us like all of these vague options. Ugh. And we would just keep saying like, well, I'm confused. Are you coming every week or not? Or, or what, what's going on here? And then she said, well, let's create your plan because I'm not creating a safety plan for the children. So let's create your plan. And we're like, okay, well, well, well what does that mean? Um, and then uh, we eventually just decided that my mother, we live in my mom's um, home. And so we decided that my mother would supervise me with the kids when she was home. And then my husband would supervise me with the kids. And they were telling you that that's what had to happen or else what? Um, honestly, uh, I think at this point, we didn't know what the or else was. We kind of just were so fearful that we just said, you know, oh, okay, well, I guess that's the way forward, which looking back, I'm, it sounds, I'm like, I would have done so many things differently now. Yeah. Um, but in that moment, you know, I mean, we should have recorded the whole meeting. DHS doesn't have to give you any, any um, documentation of your visits or what's said or what plan is created. Wow. Nothing. Wow. And so I, you know, and so we had this, it was probably 30 minutes that we sat down with her and we told her, the, you know, everything that I've said. And, and she looked at the house, saw the kids, you know, all of these things, created the plan um, and told us about the investigation. Um, and, you know, she said, oh, you know, we would do a, a random drug test. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we felt we didn't have any other choice. We just accepted accepted that we also at this point we had faith that you know um the truth will come out right like yeah. like i didn't i obviously didn't do this and so somebody's gonna see that um and so we 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 really weren't fearful of this investigation mm -hmm. 
Okay, another break to tell y'all about Good Ranchers. You know that we love Good Ranchers in the Stucky Home. We eat their better than organic chicken, their craft beef, all their cuts of steak every night. It makes sure that we at least have one portion of our meal accounted for and healthy every single night. It also saves a lot of money because when you're going to the grocery store, you're seeing the effect that inflation has had on the cost of meat, meat that you don't know where it came from, you don't know the quality of it, and you are spending an arm and a leg on it. You don't have to worry about that with Good Ranchers. You get that box of meat sent to your front door every month. You know where it's coming from. You know it's super high quality. You know the price that you're paying that stays consistent. So this is not just a great thing to purchase for yourself. It would also be a great gift. The subscription of a box of meat every month, a great gift for anyone in your family this Christmas. Go to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Ally to get 10% to save an extra 10% on every order. Go to ranchers.com code Ally. Go to ranchers.com code Ally. Okay, so what happened then from there after they left your home? So she left. Um, she supposedly did further investigating. She called my midwife and asked, you know, is this, is it possible there could be a negative drug test? Uh, my midwife, of course, said no. Um, it's impossible. I don't. I don't know if um, the if uh, the social worker was told my midwife about me, or if she was just asking. You know, like, well, do any of these tests, you know, come up false positive? So she was told by the hospital that there that it's impossible for there to be a false positive, positive. Um, and and then she, I guess, ran a background check on me, and and you know, made a few other calls or something. Um, and, uh, then probably a couple weeks later, she scheduled a three month hair test, um, which I went in and did, and it came back negative. Um, and what is that exactly? How do they, how do they test? They, uh, so they, they take a sample of your hair and they test for, you know, I think it's a five panel or something. So they're testing for all of these drugs. And one of them is cocaine and they send it to a lab. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I was negative for all of them. Um, of course. And then uh, my husband at that point and I, we were like, okay, we're good, right? We have a three month hair test. Like, of course, this will prove that, that there's some discrepancy here yeah. between the tests. Right. Um, and uh, that was not the case. We were then told that, well, actually, the three month hair test had nothing to do with the positive test and proving my innocence. It had everything to do with a second allegation, which we weren't told about. The second allegation was that there were um, drugs in our home. Nobody has been in our home except for the social worker mm -hmm. at that point. So we were thoroughly confused why there would be a second allegation. I asked her, you know, where did this allegation come from? She said, well, you know, sometimes they just attach it to the positive test. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. Okay. So it's kind of arbitrary. So yeah. you, they said it had nothing to do with the original accusation that you were taking drugs and that's why it showed up in the umbilical cord but it had something to do with that right like I think like the, it seems like they were making the assumption that the reason that it showed up on the umbilical cord they say was because you had drugs in the home this wasn't an allegation that they made afterward right no. okay so it was mm. at the same time yeah. but they they had no proof of that it was just kind of an assumption that you must have drugs in your home yeah like it is yeah it is assumed if you're taking drugs you know and it shows up on the test that there would be drugs in your home at that point yeah okay and so they just decided to attach that allegation so mm -hmm. so they say they're saying while the three-month hair test doesn't prove that you don't have drugs mm -hmm. in your home right yeah okay. yeah or I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, no, uh, it's saying that actually does prove that we don't have drugs in the home. Oh, the three month. Okay. So, oh, got it. Do you but get what I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So it disproves that, but yeah. not the original accusation yes. that you were taking drugs at the time that he was yeah. being born. Okay. Sorry, it's got confusing. It. No, so no, much. you said it clearly. I just, um, I think I got it mixed up. So continue. Mm -hmm. After that, they were like, nope, sorry, you're still on the hook for this allegation that we made back here. Yes. Yeah. So they said, well, actually, this isn't doing anything to like prove the innocence. We we can't argue with the doctor. They said several times to me, we can't argue with the doctor, um, this random doctor that has yeah. probably never seen us. Yeah. That and that's crazy. So the doctor can say anything and the government can't argue with them. That's wild. Apparently. 
yeah. don't know. That's a good question. But so, uh, so yeah. So she said, well, this has nothing to do with the original positive, um, but I, I'm, but it does, you know, combat the other allegation of 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 drugs in the home, um, and so you're not founded for the drugs in the home. But I have to found this case based on the the positive test. So essentially, it was automatically founded from the beginning. Um, and and what does that mean? So uh, DHS uses all of this language that that regular people don't understand, and they fail to define it. So we ask this. We ask, you know, what is um, this what does founded mean and we were given this very confusing description of the different levels um, of you know not, there's not confirmed then there's confirmed and then there's founded so not confirmed would be the best case scenario that oh neither of these are, are confirmed we can go about our lives um, I believe there's you know I don't think they hold on to anything they probably save the report or something but you know we're free were good. Uh, confirmed means oh, it was it was confirmed, but um, you know, uh, the, you're not placed on a registry. I believe that's yeah. the the okay. the difference. So okay, so they established the case because of the original allegation, and so mm -hmm. after that three month hair test, what was your plan? Um. So, so after the three month hair test, we re we then that concludes the twenty day investigation. Um. And then we were told that this case will be founded. Um, again, we still didn't really know what that meant. Um, but then probably about a week later, we received in the mail the founded report saying, I am founded for a case of child abuse and I am now on the child abuse registry. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, Even we lost our minds. Never, they have never brought any evidence against you. Except that they say that they got a positive test from the umbilical cord. But beyond that, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Wow. So that's what all. what did you do when you got that letter? Uh, we we were just like extremely upset, obviously. We're like, this is wrong. This is crazy. Uh, how did it even go this far? I mean, we, we really had faith that DHS was going to understand the situation, but our social worker just seemed to be like, you know, well, I haven't made a mistake. Um, I can't argue with the doctor, uh, you know, you know, making all of these excuses. I'm just trying to do my job, you know, you know, obviously, or she said, this is an interesting case, but you know, I don't know what to do. She said that several times. And okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so anyway, so we were founded and then we were told because of the founded report. Now we, now the next step would be to do, um, voluntary services is what they call it. So these voluntary services aren't actually voluntary. They're, you know, you can volunteer or else I'm going to go to the court and court order you to do these services. So, I mean, they, they like to make you feel good and, 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 you know, everything's all fine and good. But uh, if you don't do what we say, what we tell you to do, uh, we're going to take you to court. So uh, we had some back and forth with our, our social worker about these voluntary services. And um, what were they? That was our question. Oh, what are they? And she would not, she could not and would not tell us what these services are. And she said, you have to agree to these before, you know, I can order them for you. Well, okay, well, what do they look like? Can you give us an example? Can you give us what, we don't know what these services are. We're, we're utterly confused. What is, what is this service? And my husband kept asking her or saying, you know, I can't agree to something that I don't know what it is. And she said, well, you have to because there's not, you know, the, the payment has to go through. We have to check the box of agreeing before we can send somebody out here. Somebody needs to get paid. So we, we couldn't get past this with her. We kept saying, you know, well, well, this doesn't make any sense at all. So um, I don't even know what. Do, do you have any idea like what services mean? Like when they say we're going to send someone out there, like does it mean an investigation? Does it mean like something you have to prove? Is it like an interview with, so, with the social worker or what? I, I'm just totally ignorant when it comes to that. So our speculation at this point is that, you know, the, a, a plan could be all of the, a wide range of things. It could okay. be weekly visits. It could be, Daily, uh, daily visits. It could be a safety plan. It could be it. more drug tests. It could be a substance abuse evaluation. So that's what they meant by services. To my understanding now. Understand. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, but I mean, she told us things like, well, we, we have to bring out the next so social worker so that they can get to know you. And at this point, we lost all faith in DHS. We're like, no, we're not, we're not trying to get to know someone. I'm not interested in getting to know a social worker. Yeah. And and they they weren't even here from the beginning. And so they're just going to take what you said as fact with our case. And I don't know what you're saying. Yeah. To validate this founded report. I mean, you, you got to have some, you probably have to have some explanation. Yeah. On the back end to found a report. Is that right? And, and I don't know what that is. I don't know what she's telling her supervisor, which, why she, yeah. why this is okay to found a report. So we were just totally like, you know, no, you got to tell us what these are before we can agree to them. And then she said, well, it sounds like you're declining services. When you decline services and you go to China. What? A China case. So it's a, a child in need of assistance. Oh, okay. So sorry. I know that sounded yeah. Uh, Whoa. That's a, that that's, I was about to say, that's crazy. You go Never to, heard of that before, but this is awful too. No, you don't too. travel to China. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So child in need of assistance yeah. case. So that is an escalation from where it was just a founded report. So she said, you've got to do these services. I don't know if what, you want to keep your child, if you don't want to go to jail or if you don't want this to get worse, just vague kind of yeah. or else. Um, mm -hmm. And you didn't, you just wanted to know what the services were. She said, well, we got to send someone out there so someone can get paid before yeah. we can actually define what these ser services are so you can agree to them. Yeah. And so when you just asked for clarity and said, I'm not going to agree to those until you tell us what they are, she said, you're going to decline this. And then that's where China, the child in need of assistance case mm -hmm. came in. So tell us what is different about the that the child in need of assistance case versus what you had, which was just the founded case with the yeah. services. So the difference is when you go to a China case, you're moved from you're moved into the judicial system. So now you're moved into the legal court. Um, DHS is able to circumvent the court. Um, this is how they're able to, you know, remove a child without a, con a criminal conviction or anything like that. So they like to keep it outside because they like to, in my opinion, they like to be in control of the situation. Um, and, and they they actually, I believe, would prefer to not go to a China case mm. um, because uh, then, then they can control everything that happens. Because when you go to a China case, obviously there's a judge that you know, um, oversees everything. So, yeah. so, um, but when you go to a China case, um, there's this term, it's called adjudication. Um, I'm not, I'm not super clear on what this is. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, adjudication is, is DHS involvement as ordered by the court. And so DHS will come in with recommendations for the family and then the court will order uh, if, if the court agrees will order those recommendations. So that could be child removal. That could be, um, you know, f other uh, requirements from DHS, things like that. Um, and so, yeah, it's, a, it's an escalation out of this um, world of DHS into the court. Okay, gotcha. So after that happened, and when she told you that, I'm sure that that worried you, just yes. not knowing what that meant. And it sounds like, okay, this is getting more serious. What the heck is going to happen? Mm -hmm. So. First, before we move on to what happened next during this time, how many weeks have passed at this point? So when, so I believe it was probably five weeks when we received okay. the founded report. And were you having to have like supervision with your, when you were with your kids? I mean, your mom and husband. Yeah, that's, so. that's all we had. Okay. Yeah. So you, there was no threat at that point of them taking your child or anything like that. You didn't know. But yeah. you were able to stay home. He was able to stay with you yeah. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Right. But I can't even imagine the added anxiety during that postpartum period, especially a traumatic one where you almost where you were hemorrhaging at the hospital. Yeah. Dealing with all of this, too. Oh, my gosh. It was just so, so much chaos, you know, and so um, scary. Yeah. And when you don't again, like nobody knows about DHS until they knock on their door. And so. You, you just don't really know. I mean, um, we also didn't couldn't financially like get a get a lawyer initially. Yeah. And so we just, you know, we said, OK, well, we're going to, you know, obviously I'm not doing drugs, so we think we're going to be OK. You know, we'll keep testing and it's going to come up. I'm not using, you know, all of this stuff. So we did have faith that, you know, it, it would work out. But um, 
in hindsight, yeah, we should have had a lawyer immediately. Yeah. So, okay, after it escalated, mm-hmm. then what happened from there? Um, so it, it escalated to a child in need of assistance. Um, and then at that point, uh, we received court-appointed lawyers, both my husband and I. Um, and, and at that point, the, our, our children received um, a guardian ad litem. Um, and the guardian ad litem is, uh, is a lawyer that represents our children's best interest um, in the court. Um, and so then uh, we had our first hearing and it was decided, you know, uh, you, you don't go into adjudication until all parties agree that this is necessary. And we obviously weren't in agreement with anything up at this point. So we, we contested the China. Um, my husband and I went into it thinking we were going to be able to like go on the stand and, and tell our story and pre- pre- present our evidence. Um, but that's not what happened. Uh, we went into the court and there was some discussion. We submitted 25 pieces of evidence before the, the court date so that everyone could see it. This included um, a 12 month hair test that we did on our own out of pocket and um, and when it says 12 months, does that mean it's able to detect in the previous 12 months mm-hmm. whether you had taken the yes. drugs that it's testing for? Okay. Got yeah. It. And we did that um, so that it would cover the entirety of my pregnancy. Right, right. Because we were told when we did the three-month hair test, oh, well, you could have used in, mu- in month zero, zero through six. You could have still used. Um, and and what's interesting is- So the, why wouldn't they have just ordered a 12-month test themselves? Exactly. That's our point. And it's also the one that we did, the 12-month, is with the same lab, yeah. Omega Labs, same lab. Um, and so really, they it, it would have been so simple for them to do the exact same test to actually like do that. You know, my, my lawyers like presents the question, you know, this took eight months. Who's paying for this? The taxpayers. Yeah. All the lawyers, all the court hearings, like all of the time, you know, we could have saved all of this taxpayer payer yeah. money if we would have just done a 12 month test or from the beginning, yeah. if we would have just retested the sample from the beginning. So all of this is wasted. And, you know, my family has suffered eight months of abuse. Right. Right. And we'll get to. Yeah. We'll, we'll definitely get into all of that. So you did the 12 month test mm-hmm. that came back negative. You submitted that as evidence before mm-hmm. you actually went to court after it escalated to China. You you would think that that would have just been it. That's done. Yeah. OK. You took the 12 month test. It came back negative. That's it. That's yeah. hospital must have made a mistake. But that's it wasn't that simple. Mm-mm. No, we, we think we think that, you know, why we speculate it went went this far is because we stopped we started holding accountability to DHS after the founded report because we lost again we lost all faith that we would be dealt with pre- properly we were already extremely like wrongly dealt with yeah. missed out with so um, yeah we lost all faith at that point and then my husband you know uh, he's like no I'm not going to allow this like somebody needs to tell us what's actually going on here somebody needs to actually like have accountability because if nobody's holding accountability to DHS that can remove children from homes what's going on here yeah they don't they don't have any documentation for us mm-hmm. you know like the easiest thing like I, I don't know any business would would be concerned about like if my if my um, employees are on the phone calls I want to see those phone calls make sure quality make sure the quality is good make sure things are being dealt with properly there's none of that here mm-hmm. like a DHS worker could literally say whatever they want and do whatever they want and nobody would know yeah because there's no requirement for any kind of transparency yeah or paper trail or things like that. Okay, I've got a really good Christmas gift idea for you for your kids, particularly if you've got kids ages, mm, I would say like 5 to 12, then you should check out Brave Books. They have this amazing subscription service called the Freedom Island Book Club, where you get a new Brave book every month. And these books, I'm holding it up if you're watching, um, they've, they are 
uh, promoting the values that we want to instill in our kids. Unfortunately, when you go to public libraries nowadays, they've got their pride displays and things like that. But when it comes to brave books, like they're teaching your kids about the virtues of, of humility, for example, of treating people with kindness, the reality of the gender binary, the importance of faith in God. This one's written by Kurt Cameron called uh, Pride Comes Before the Fall. It's always beautifully illustrated. My kids love them. Super, super cute. Go to bravebooks.com. You'll get Brave's newest book for free and receive 20% off your subscription with code Allie. Bravebooks.com, code Allie. Okay, so you went to court, you submitted this evidence. What happened? Um, we went to court. Uh, we we thought, you know, of course they would dismiss it then because we felt like it was overwhelming the and evidence. This was how many weeks postpartum? How old was he at this point? Oh gosh, I think I believe it was in June um, or July. So so a few months in. Yeah, at, at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay. So and during that time, you it was just a lot of back and forth trying to figure out what was going to happen. Yeah, yeah, a lot of that. Um, we didn't have any any um. Uh, social workers in our home between the filing of the China case or between the founded report and the filing of the China case and our actual hearing. We didn't have any involvement in our home during that period. Um, And so that was nice to like have, we were able to try to, you know, lead a a somewhat normal life as we were, as we were preparing. But um, yeah, so we went in, um, in court, uh, then it was decided that we're going to have a continuance. We received a court order then to do an, a, a resample, a retest on the original sample, um, the original umbilical cord, and a DNA test on it as well to make sure it's actually mine. We received that court order in this hearing. We also, it was determined that we would um, participate in voluntary services at this point. Um, and that included two monthly visits with DHS. Um, and then a random drug test. And we said, okay, we're Gosh. gonna take it. We'll we'll just do it. I know that uh, like I, know. I think, you know, I think any parent would do the same thing, just hoping that it would go away. Yeah. But it's so unfair that you even had to do that. Yeah, it's it's so crazy, Allie. Like there's so many of these things and um, there was no due process at all in any of this. And even even when we got into the China case, we felt like, oh, we'll be able to prove our our innocence. But at that point, it's already agreed for it's already agreed that DHS is pushing for adjudication, you know, involvement. And so you're you're not starting from the beginning when you go into a China case. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody's asking, well, how do we get here? Everyone's saying, well, OK, everything from here on out or everything from here from up until this point is true. You know, they're taking that as as you know this founded report is true Mm. so um so yeah we agreed to those two um visits the random drug test and um in court um this is kind of interesting in court uh dhs was also recommending that i do a substance abuse evaluation and um we didn't we don't want to do this uh because it's not just an evaluation it's um a treatment plan by the professionals is what they call them. We, we go to a third party, the professionals, they do a substance abuse evaluation and create a treatment plan, which we would then be re- be recommended to follow, right? So, but what treatment plan could they possibly give you if you weren't on drugs? Like, wouldn't they just, did you not want to do it because you thought that they would just give you a treatment plan even if it was obvious that you weren't on drugs yeah that or you know i don't do any drugs so i don't know there's all these concerns like are they gonna think i'm like i have a mental problem because like i'm a liar so holistic yeah yeah it could be yeah all of these there could be so many things like and then uh they they could also i mean we just haven't had no trust that yeah that it would so they wanted to do weekly visits mm-hmm. right and um but your lawyer thankfully pushed back on that yes yeah that's a good i'm glad you brought that up so dhs actually came in wanting us to do weekly visits with them into court yes wanting to do weekly visits with them and we were just like shocked like you haven't even seen our family for a month and a half at this point um and and you didn't even create a safety plan for our kids why are you asking for weekly visits yeah I mean, and you you even told us, well, this is an interesting case, but like, I'm, I don't know what, to, I'm not sure what to do here. 
Yeah, why would you need to come to our house every week? Yeah. It does. It just makes me wonder if there's some kind of financial or employment incentive just to prove themselves useful the busier they are. Um, I don't – I I should fact check this, but I've heard that there is um, – they receive um, – there's obviously payment the longer that families are in conflict. Mm. So the longer they keep families in conflict conflict with DHS, there um, is a, a monetary incentive. So, mm. and when there is a child removed from a home, there's also a payout. Mm. So yeah, I'm not sure if that's true because I don't know. Maybe this is the best time to insert this. And mm -hmm. like my issue with CPS, I talked to someone. I think it was last year. She wrote a book, Naomi Riley, called No Way to Treat a Child. And through her extensive research, she found that actually children are not taken out of the home as often as they should in most cases, that mm -hmm. um, there is a social justice, mm -hmm. like equity um, incentive kind of to not remove children oh, from like very abusive homes like actual abusive homes based on like the ethnicity or socioeconomic status of the family um and so they will leave kids actually in dangerous situations unfortunately when they should be removed but then in other cases mm -hmm. For whatever reason they have, they will be way too hasty to get involved and to remove a child. So I only say that because I'm not sure where the financial incentives lie, mm -hmm. but there's obviously strange motivations, it seems like, behind what CPS, DHS does. Not in every case. I'm sure mm -hmm. that there are a lot of really good social workers out there. But there certainly seems to be kind of perverse incentives in a lot of these cases going on, whether it's whether it goes one mm -hmm. way or another, if that makes sense. So, yeah. Yeah. That's anyway. a good point. I don't want to make it sound like I think that every DHS worker no, is like No, it doesn't evil. sound like that. It doesn't. Because yeah. I, I, they're not. I mean, you know, but when you have processes that can do this. Yeah. When it's an, in, you know, it's I'm an innocent person. Yeah. I mean, that's very scary. Of course. And they also don't have the discernment to be making these decisions. Yeah. They really don't. I mean, it's all bureaucratic checking of the boxes. Yeah. It doesn't sound like they really care personally. Yeah. And um, it's really interesting because, I, I, you know, every no, no DHS worker, I would imagine, has been on the other side, right? Mm. Because if you've been on the other side, why would you work for DHS? Yeah. You know, but also, um, yeah, I mean... People, people on the inside, they don't see the effect of what they're doing on the outside. Okay, last sponsor for the day, and that is Patriot Mobile. Patriot Mobile has an amazing uh, deal going on right now. Now they've got their Black Friday deal that is still uh, that is still happening, and they um, they are offering a free smartphone, a free smartphone. Wow! With promo code Friday seventy six, this is a limited time offer. So if you go to patriotmobile.com slash ally and you use Friday 76, you can get a free smartphone. That's pretty incredible. They are America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. They are standing behind the values, the principles that you and I have, and they have great uh, great coverage, and they guarantee your satisfaction. So go to patriotmobile.com slash Ally. Use code Friday 76 for that free smartphone, patriotmobile.com slash Ally. So at our, our previous hearing, our first China hearing, um, they said that we would do these two visits. We would have this r random drug test, and, and a substance abuse evaluation was not necessary at this point unless I tested positive um, on a drug test. All of this was agreed by the judge, the ad litem, you know, DHS wanted to do it, but yeah, obviously the yeah. judge is the one. So um, this was decided, and then we went into our first visit with DHS, and they said, well, we recommend a drug abuse evaluation. And we said, well, we just had this conversation that this is not necessary unless I test positive. My social worker said, oh, I don't remember what was said. So I'm going to go uh, uh, talk to your lawyers and I'll talk to the guardian ad litem and I'll talk to my supervisor and I'll get back to you. I don't know what she did, but my understanding is that she just went to her supervisor and said, you know, this and her supervisor came back to us and said, well, this is what we're recommending. They didn't care what was said previously. 
Um, and that we have to tread very carefully because, you know, if we don't comply, it is seen as a negative choice yeah, by right. the judge. And the judge even told us, if you do not participate, I, I am allowed to see that as a negative choice. The judge said this. And so we, we are very aware of this, right? So we had some discussion and we said, you know what? No, let's get the manuscript from the the trial. Um, like, we're not going to, to do this. Yeah. Um, we weren't able to get the manuscript, mm. but we we would like to get that at some point. But we ended up declining the the ser- service, the yeah. evaluation. We did the drug test, another three month hair test. It was negative. Um, we did the two visits. We also did a visit with the kids ad litem. We go into our hearing. Well, <clears throat> a few days before our hearing, we received DHS's filing before the hearing, um, and. DHS is rec- they gave us uh, DHS gave us eight recommendations. So these include um, the custody of our children moved under the department. What? And further uh, under the department does that mean given to the state? Yeah. They DHS at this point, after all of the negative tests, after you went to court already, right? They recommended that the government remove your kids from your home wow yeah at this point i had seven tests seven seven negative tests a negative 12 month hair test two negative three month hair tests four negative urine tests and we had fulfilled all of the requirements besides the substance abuse evaluation and the recommendation was based just on the drugs? They didn't add anything else? Like, oh, she's not giving them vaccines or anything else? I, I'm not sure. I don't know what conversation happened behind. But at least publicly, that's what they were telling you, that this is just because of the drug suspicion. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Wow. That's what was, yeah. That was uh, what was said to us. Um, that, you know, because of this drug abuse evaluation and whatever. So uh, we were blindsided by these recommendations. I have to tell you a couple more of them. So the first one is custody of our children would be moved under the department. Custody of the children would be placed into foster care or, oh, you know, they gosh. use they use the term um, fictive kin um, or family, you know, relative. But we live with our with my mom and, you know, I'm, I'm just not confident that they would actually choose. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to choose. Right. But foster care is an option. Right. So those are the, the first two. Um, and then it's, you know, Emily, su- Emily submits to all and any further drug testing. Um, uh, Emily and Michael participate in family-centered services. Um, Emily and Michael sign all of all, all documents, all releases necessary, you know, things like that. And, and I think there were a couple other ones. Obviously, there were eight. But those were the, the main ones. And this is the, the day before Thanksgiving this happens. We received this filing. And, um, you know, we are – I was physically sick that day. I, I mean, of course. we don't know why this is happening. I, I tested negative again. And, you know, again, you know, DHS keeps throwing out these, like, they'll make you feel really good. And then, oh, here's a sub- – here's a – a founded report of child abuse. Oh, here's a China case. Oh, but, you know, everything's okay. Um, What's a filing? Like, how do you define that? Um, a filing would just be the document that they file um, for court so that everyone can view it right. beforehand. Okay. To my knowledge. I'm not a legal person, but this no, is you're what doing I've great. learned. You're doing great <laughs> During... remembering all of the acronyms and explaining them. So I just wanted to yeah. get your definition of that. Um, okay. So that was the day before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we are just like, I mean, you can imagine like all the emotions we're going through. Of course. I was, this might be too much, but I'm like vomiting. I'm, I'm sick that day. Of like course. we, and you we hear all these horror stories too about DHS yeah. and things like that. And so, and you know, we've lost all trust at this point too. And so we just really just don't know what's happening. I mean, um, you're thinking they're going to take your kids. Yeah. Worst nightmare for a parent. I mean, what if it gets accepted? I, we don't know what the judge is going to say. We don't know if they're going to accept their recommendations. And um, and what does your lawyer say? I'm, I'm sure that you called. Yeah. So lawyer my lawyer said, well, this is particularly asinine, is what she said. 
uh, my husband's lawyer said this seems outrageously stupid and irresponsible. So you you have two lawyers? Yeah. Okay. That was another thing too is, you know, my husband and I, our family is one unit and we, my my lawyer couldn't talk to my husband. His lawyer couldn't talk to me. And so it just felt very, yeah, it was, it was hard. Yeah. Because we, you know, my husband is leading our family. He's, you know, the protector of our family. Yeah. And he's the one leading us out of this. And then my lawyer's trying to talk to me and get, you know, I have to talk to my lawyer without the, without my husband, you know, being there. So it just was very difficult for me because I trust my husband to, you know, understand how to try to navigate this. I'm, I'm very emotional and, um, so I, I, it was hard for me to not be able to like lean on him in those yeah. conversations. Yeah. But. So um, then tell me what happened after that. So that was the day before Thanksgiving, not very long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we prepared for the worst, honestly. And I, I'll be honest with you. I said, well, am I, am I going to be a criminal now? Like, am, I mean, I, I can't, uh, I can't allow them to take our kids. I can't allow that for that to happen. So we, we considered, I mean, all the variety of options. What, what would that mean? Um, because once they take the child, once they, they remove the child, and I don't know what it is in every case, but I mean, it could be a year before you receive your child back. Wow. I mean, worse, well, not, not worst case, but that could potentially be the outcome. Yeah. So we're weighing all these options, you know, like what, what really... Yeah. yeah. What what's possible here? Yeah. And what happened with um because the court did order the hospital to retest, right? Yes, yeah. And the hospital wouldn't do that? No. Retest the umbilical cord, right? Yeah, retest the umbilical cord. Yeah. So we we went to the hospital and we said, "Here's the court order. We need to get this testing done." And they said, "We don't we actually don't do the testing. You have to go to the lab." And we went to the lab, and then the lab says, well, you have to go through the hospital. And so we went around this circle. I mean, it's – I could have told you this probably four months ago that this is what was going to happen because I had called the lab, you know, several times trying to get information on this sample. They hold it for a year. Um, but that I found out through my pediatrician. Um, and so they, I'm not their client. I'm not the, the lab's client. The hospital is. Right. So – I'll just be clear here. So the the hospital took a, a piece of my umbilical cord, my body, my organ that my body created, and did a test on it. How's houses it at this lab? And I have no access to it. Yeah. Meanwhile, DHS can accuse me of child abuse and found me in a report of child abuse. Yeah. And and, and, and take, take my kids away. Yeah. And you really had like n- very little due process yeah throughout this whole thing and you did everything that you possibly could to prove your innocence yeah you took a 12-month test that showed that you hadn't taken any of these drugs that they accused you of taking for the past year throughout your entire pregnancy and they still said no you're subject to all of our recommendations yeah wow we submitted 25 pieces of evidence um in our china case we we showed up in court and none of the DHS had DHS staff had looked at any of our pieces of evidence. They didn't even know that I did this twelve month hair test. Wow, it's like they didn't care. Yeah. So okay, so this was last week that this yeah. happened. Yeah, it was wow. last week. So what has happened since? Um. So we we prepared for the worst that you know this is the potential they're recommending removal of, of the custody of our children from our care um we started to pray we we tried to get we told people our story that you know hopefully they would pray for us and we had this outpour of support from our communities and um it, it was really like moving and touching that um that people would be doing this somebody commented on my video that um they she said, please know, like, people that you don't even know are praying for you. And I just was really moved by that. Um, and we went into court this Monday. Um, and uh, we we felt it was very unlikely that it would get dismissed because of the 
yeah. level of recommendations. We only had 30 minutes too. This was this was aimed for a dismissal. This was the, you know, our last court date. We said, okay, we'll follow these recommendations, and then this will likely be a dismissal. Um, and so then when they filed that, we were like, is a dismissal even possible? Like, would, would a judge even take that? Is the judge going to remember the previous conversation that this substance abuse evaluation wasn't necessary? So we had all these questions. We went in um, and we were very, I mean, uh, we were just really blessed. Uh, they dismissed our case and um, we felt like that wasn't even possible. We thought they were going to like compromise likely. Yeah. Um, what did the judge say? Uh, the judge said, uh, well, she, first she asked the the county attorney um, who represents DHS, would they like to do a contested hearing? If they do a contested hearing, that means they'll pro- present pieces of evidence to support their recommendation. Yeah, which they don't have. No. <laughs> wow. Well, to which they replied no. Yeah. So they didn't want to do a contested hearing. Because they know that they didn't have evidence. Yeah. And wow. so we, I mean, that was like upsetting to me too because I'm like, well, yes, I want this dismissal, of course, but why make the recommendation? Yeah. You just sent us through this entire like crazy, chaotic roller coaster of emotion. Like we're going to, you're going to remove our kids. Yeah. And you have no, you don't want to, con- you don't want to like prove that. Yeah. They think that you're so dangerous that they need to remove your kids from your home, put them into foster care. Yeah. But not so dangerous that they're willing to even push back at all. Yeah. On the dismissal. It makes no sense. It it just like yeah. It's it's just like so frustrating that that they can throw that out there. And this is what I mean when I say all no, nobody in DHS understands the effect of DHS ex, the exterior right. effect. Right. Because why would they fla- file this it's like they weren't even thinking like, oh, well, let's just check this box. Let's, let's recommend removal of the custody of these children from their parents. And they don't think it's going to like send us into a spiral. Yeah. It, it just felt cruel. Yeah. It felt very cruel. And uh, but thank God we it was dismissed. The judge said, you know, um, we were hoping that DHS would be rec- rep- reprimanded by the judge. Uh, but the judge uh, just said, you know, thank you, everyone, for your hard work. She was very kind and polite. She uh, said, um, you know, DHS did the right thing, which I disagree with. But she said totally. that. And she said, um, uh, but there's no evidence that the children need to be adjudicated. And Praise so, God. yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Wow. So are you still on the registry of child abusers? I am. Will you be forever? Uh, what we does don't that know. Mean? Yeah. Like, if you want to have future children, is that going to be some kind of obstacle? Well, that's what we're concerned about. Is because we also have we also are very holistic. You know, DHS follows recommendations of the hospital, right, for childcare. We don't for everything. So you know, we don't vaccinate. We, um, you know, declined all of these things. You know, we prefer as natural, n- yeah. non-interventive as possible. Um, and so we have that you know, now that presents challenges. And so, but then we also have this child, this founded report of child abuse. We want to homeschool. So. And you're in Iowa, mm -hmm. which is a pretty conservative state. Yeah. It's not like you're in California or Oregon. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's very scary that, um, that it, it seems like we're not allowed to like make our own choices for our children. If we do, your life's going to be very hard. Right. It's like you can. It's kind of like the voluntary services. They're voluntary, yeah. but if you do or don't do, yeah, you know, then we're going to punish you, which is not really voluntary. It's not really a choice. It's yeah. very concerning. Yeah. Very concerning. So, well, praise God it got dismissed. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is a huge blessing. And I just have to believe that somehow the Lord is using this for his glory and somehow mm-hmm. to help other people. Maybe it's even just like your recommendation that someone gets a lawyer immediately. The things that you kind of learned in hindsight, who knows? Yeah. Who knows what it is? Um we're actually going to have the governor of Iowa <laughs> on pretty soon, right? And so maybe she'll maybe she'll hear this. Maybe she'll hear this story. That's and, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and there will be uh, there will there will be some reform. Gosh, there's got to be so much widespread reform. But 
what is your plan going forward? Like, I would still be, I know you probably want to just get out of the whole thing, because I would too, but I I'm like want to know, what happened, hospital? What happened, lab? Is there a baby out there who's parents are doing drugs and you mixed up the test somehow you mixed up the results like what in the world happened and I would obviously want my name cleared from that yeah. list which it should be even so you got months of your life and yeah. your rights trampled upon yeah the biggest thing I think that it has affected me the most is from the minute that they did a non-consensual drug test on my son my motherhood was removed yeah compromised because who's the legal guardian i'm the legal guardian i'm the mother of my son and nobody asked me about this test they identify the court as the babies to get around the consent right but who's the guardian here is it the hospital it must be that's what that tells me is that the hospital is the guardian of my child i've gone to them for a service i've i've paid them for to care for me if you do something like that without consent, that and I mean, now we have eight months of the repercussion of this action. So it, it, I don't know, that needs to be looked at. Yeah. And so what's unfortunate is, is um, you know, my motherhood was then removed and it continued to be removed. You know, yeah. DHS needed to supervise me. I needed to be supervised with my children. Um, you know, and then, oh, now we have to go before a judge and my, my children have a guardian ad litem that represents their best interest in court. I'm not the person who represents my children's best interests in court. Yeah. And so the, the fact that they're able to do this to a mother, to a family, it's mm-hmm. just like so wrong. Yeah. I don't know. I, Definitely. It, it's just so wrong. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I guess our next steps, um, are, we're going to go through the appeal process now, which is interesting because we actually have to go to DHS, the party that, that founded this report to ask them for an appeal, which is just interesting to me. I don't know if that's how it normally works, but just this concept of, you know, DHS, you founded me for child abuse. Um, please, can I have an appeal? Yeah. Um, so we're going to do that, of course, um. I, even if I do have my name removed, I believe there's a report still in DHS's system. Um, I'll be on the registry for, for five years if, if we don't get it removed. Oh, um, and uh, yeah, so we will, uh, if we do want compensation, like if we do decide to file a suit of some kind, um, DHS is pretty protected. So, so we're not sure if, you know, that's even possible Mm -hmm. um but we will have to actually prove my innocence with due process yeah right i mean obviously we can't just go and like sue and like everyone just believes us yeah we have to then present our evidence yeah i mean the whole thing just went the exact opposite of how it's supposed to go you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty and you were guilty until proven innocent and you weren't even like even your innocence that you proved wasn't taken as evidence Mm -hmm. wow um thank you so much for taking the time to share your story i just have to believe that there is going to be some redemption from it Mm -hmm. um and so thank you for having the courage also and the strength to tell your story not everyone does so thank you so much thank you ali and thank you for the opportunity um it's just i'm so grateful to you for listening of course well I'm, i'm i'm glad to do it it'll help someone i believe that so thank you Thanks.